Here's going to be a review of Alien Romulus. I was admittedly a little late on seeing the movie. I didn't see it till Sunday night. That's not a day or time that I usually go to see movies, but it's the only time I had available this weekend. Saw it in a non-premium format, just regular screening at 7.30. Now, through the ups and downs of the Alien franchise, it never takes too long before we get another installment. Some might not realize this, but this is the first installment of the franchise under Disney. That's right, the f***ing Xenomorph is part of the Disney family. Although, unlike Deadpool, I don't think you'll see the Xenomorph walking around Disneyland anytime soon. Now, when we last saw the Alien franchise, it was in its prequel era stage with 2012's Prometheus, which I f***ing hated and the most recent 2017's Alien Covenant, which I admittedly enjoyed. Although despite the mostly positive reviews from critics for that film, that film got a pretty mixed reception from fans. But this series feels like Jurassic Park, which is chasing the ghost of the series' glory days with the initial installment that made the series iconic. In the case of the Alien series, that would be 1979's Alien, the first installment, and the sequel, 1986 Aliens. Two top-notch science fiction stories, some of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time. The first Alien was great sci-fi horror, and then the sequel Aliens leaned more on great sci-fi action. And in the years since then, no crappy sequels or crappy prequels or crossovers can live up to those films. Disney decided to bring the series back to its glory era, setting Romulus in between Alien and Aliens. Given the 57 year gap between the ending of Alien and the start of Aliens, this was a pretty smart choice. Romulus sees a group of young adults and teenagers investigating an abandoned spacecraft named Romulus for valuable commodities and well, you can guess what they find instead. To get the best kick out of this film story, you only need to have watched the first Alien, which this movie makes direct references to the events of that film and it plays a vital role in the story. Before watching the film, I thought there was a chance that it referenced some of the stuff from the recent prequel era Alien films in Prometheus and Alien Covenant, especially since Ridley Scott was involved in both of those films as a director, but this ended up being not the case. The connection to the first Alien isn't just through the story though, it's through the look and the feel of the movie. Romulus just feels like an old school sci-fi adventure with the look, feel, and sound of the film. The set design and locations perfectly replicate the best of the original Aliens design, and some of the effect shots of space as the ships are traveling are just majestic and some of the best looking I've seen in the film in years. The score also adds to this feel as well. There's also a whole lot of practical effects work done here on the creatures, which is obviously always appreciated. Now, as the film story was developing and getting started, it felt like a classic slasher film setup just set in space. You know, you have teenagers and young adults f***ing around and going places they shouldn't be and eventually getting brutally murdered. Just substitute a guy in a hockey mask for face huggers and xenomorphs. It's a much younger group of characters than the adults we normally follow in the Alien films, but this did help freshen things up. The central character that we follow here is a teenage girl named Rain, played by an actress I'd never seen before in Kaylee Spanny. All I could think of while watching her was how the f***? did she not get cast as Ellie for the live-action Last of Us show? I mean, she just completely looks and feels like that character. But her performance and character were good here. You know, she's an orphan, so she's had a lot of struggle in life. Her main companion is an android named Andy, who is her surrogate brother left by her father. Now, I had never seen this actor who played the android before, a guy named David Johnson. But man, was this guy fantastic. The nature of being a droid adds a whole lot of complexity to his character. We see two very different sides out of him, but the performance was great. The philosophy of droids adds a different level of tension to these films when done right. It was the main thing I liked about Alien Covenant was the interesting dynamic and tension brought by the android David played brilliantly by Michael Fassbender in that film. And the same thing is true here with the androids in this film. I think the other characters in this group are serviceable for what they are, you know, they do kind of play to their types. You have your nice guy, your asshole guy, your tough chick, and your pregnant chip. But you know, all of them together, they were okay and served the story as they should have. Your series icons and the facehuggers and the xenomorphs do what you'd expect them to do, but that's of course what people are paying to see. This was probably the most terrifying use of the facehuggers in this film, just because there's so many of them and seeing how relentless they are was truly yikes highlighted by a great set piece which shows what you have to do to sneak past a bunch of them. 
collectively, I think I like the face sucker stuff a lot more than your xenomorph scenes here. You know, there's fun scenes with them, but I guess after rewatching all the Aliens films recently, this movie wasn't really breaking any major new ground in terms of what they did with them, nor did I find it to be honestly all that scary. Also, I thought the gore was mostly a little lackluster when it came to your classic xenomorph scenes. I think they kind of chickened out on showcasing some pretty brutal stuff. The best xenomorph related stuff in this film was a scene where the characters have to deal with an army of them while working around the fact that when you shoot them their blood is corrosive acid, meaning that if it gets on the spaceship floor it's gonna burn a hole through the ship and bad shit is gonna happen. This would definitely get my vote for one of the best scenes of this film, it was pretty creative. Through the movie, a lot of the elements were working for me. You know, I was liking the younger cast. There were some cool set pieces, and I liked how it played on the legacy of the first Alien. It does so in a major way that I know will annoy a lot of your old school purists when it comes to, you know, bringing characters back. But I thought it was a cool, appropriate throwback that was important for how the story played out. Now, the movie felt like it was over, but then it threw in one final element of danger that would probably be the most talked about element of this film. And, uh, wow, you know, that's all I can say. I said that I thought the gore throughout the film was pretty mediocre. Well, that wasn't the case with the start of this scene. Holy sh**, did it look painful to watch. After this, though, while I liked that the film threw in something new, when the scene ultimately played out, all I could think of was, man, you know, how many alien films are going to have a climax that plays out the same way? You know, this is like five alien films that end in similar fashion. Not to mention, there's a few moments where physics just gets thrown out the window and where I thought to myself, uh, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't really work out this way. So that did bring down the movie a bit for me at the end. I thought it was a little exhausting. But for the most part, I did have a solid time with Alien Romulus. You know, you had a good legacy follow-up to your first Alien, some fun set pieces and sci-fi horror. I just thought it could have been a little sharper at the end. So 7.5 out of 10 chest holes for Alien Romulus. The best way to describe things here is that it's the Force Awakens of the Alien films, and believe it or not, I mean that as a compliment. It was solid business for the movie money-wise when it came to its opening weekend box office. $41 million on its opening weekend, which I think is a good start, but not a great start. But given though that the film only had an $80 million budget, which is low for a blockbuster these days, and has already made over $100 million worldwide, that's definitely a pretty solid start. So Disney definitely has another franchise to play with for a few years. Although, like I said, it might take a while before we see the Xenomorph walking around at Disneyland though. In terms of where it lands in the hierarchy of Alien films for me, well obviously it can't touch the first two installments, Alien and Aliens, but it's obviously much better than the low points of the series in Alien 3 or AVP Requiem. So that'll do it for this review of Alien Romulus. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching.